That's right, brother. Come you on, start man. talking about God, they say, shut up. We don't want to hear it. <laughs> Go ahead. Am I telling it right? That's Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. What the world, they, don't, they want to hear about all this other garbage. Amen. But you talk about God, they want you to shut up. Yes. Amen. They don't want to hear the name of God. Try. It offends them. You know why? Because it gets to their heart. Right. Yeah. It gets to their heart. All these people, and I don't mean to get off ahead of myself and all, but all these people walking around with piercings and tattoos and all this stuff, hey, they're hiding what they're doing. Hey, man. They're looking for something. Right. They're looking for something. I ain't got a problem with all that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not preaching on it. Well, what I'm saying is they're, the people, they turn to this and they turn to that to try to hide their problems. Amen. It's yeah. a heart problem. Amen. That stuff ain't going to fix their heart. Yeah. It's God. Amen. They're hiding from something. They, they try to keep people away from them. But somebody's got to tell them about God. Yeah. Somebody's got to tell them about God. Go ahead. If we sit here cold and dead on God, how are we going to go out, out here and expect somebody to see God in us if we're cold? Amen. 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 Come on. Bless him, Lord. I yeah. said the other night, we sat in church our whole life. Dead. Yeah. Amen. I, I, I ain't trying to discourage them. Amen. Come on. God showed me some Christians in these now days. Amen. Amen. Preach it. Dead in a hammer, but been in church all their life. Yeah. Amen. How's that going to spark, spark a fire in somebody? Go ahead. Sitting there cold, dried up on God. Amen, come on. It's a shame. It's us, it ain't God. Amen. God don't leave us. We leave him. Amen. Yeah. We break the yeah. fellowship, not on. God. Amen. Come He's on, the man. same today, for, t today, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, forevermore. Amen. I misspoke that probably. Yeah. yeah. But I'm going on. Mm -hmm. I want you to notice here, there's a real battle. Got on the other night. It's a spiritual battle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It ain't a fleshly battle. It's a spiritual battle. Yeah. I ain't going to dwell on that. Preach on something the other night. That ain't even what my problem is, but I just want to throw that in there because we serve a real God and a real devil, and there's a real battle. Amen. Amen. If you're going to be in the battle, you're going to have to stand on God, and you'll never make it. Amen. Amen. You can't stand on yourself. You're going to have to depend on God. Uh-huh. You're going to fall on your face if you're trying to do it by yourself. Amen. you got to have God. Hey, the devil, I don't want to give him no credit, but he's tough. Amen. We can't defeat him by ourselves sometimes. Amen. We need God. Amen. But I'm going on here to get my scripture here. I want you to look right there in verse 5. Well, let me tell you what's going on a little bit before we get there. The sons of the prophets, now, we could, we could say they're Bible students, I guess, if you want to say it that way. They're studying up how to be prophets is what's going on yeah. here. Uh -huh. And it says the place that we're at right here, verse 1, the place where we dwell is too straight for us. The place where they're studying at under this man of God, Elisha, is too small now. They've outgrew it. That's what they're saying. This place is too straight. We need a bigger place. We need to go out. It says in verse 2, let us go into the Jordan and take this, every, uh, every man of being, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. They're wanting to go out in the woods just they've outgrew this place and cut down some uh, trees and make them a bigger place to study. That's what they're wanting to do. And then one of the prophets uh, comes to Elisha and he says, okay, if God tells you to do that, you go ahead. I'm paraphrasing. I'm, I'm trying to hurry through. But he says, go ahead and go. Well, then the prophet said, well, I want you to go too. And I can just see that old man of God. He's probably saying, uh, God's probably going, here's these guys that's wanting to get closer to God, and they're going out wanting to put in some work so they can do more for God. God's probably going to show up out there in them woods. I might want to go. <laughs> Where God is, I want to be, don't you? Amen. So he said, yeah, I'll go. I told you all that to get to my verses here and tell you what's going on here. I want you to notice in verse 5. Uh-huh. But as one of them was fell in a vein, the axe head fell into the water. Uh -huh. yeah. That's what I want to dwell on tonight. I want to flip over here to Revelation. You don't have to for the sake of time, but I'm going to read you a few verses. I'm going to tell you what that axe head represents. It's what God showed me. Uh, Revelation 12, 7 through 10, I'm going to read it real fast. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dra dragon fought his angels and prevailed not. Praise, Praise God for that. Amen. Neither was there a place found any more in heaven, and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil, glory to God, Amen. he was cast out. And Satan, which deceived the whole world, that's what he does, friend, he deceives you, he lies to you. Amen. The father of all lies. Amen. He deceived the whole world, and he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. That's what I like. And I heard a loud voice saying in the heaven, Now has come salvation. And strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ, 
For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Amen. Amen. I read that. The devil wants to accuse. He, he, he does. He accuses us every day. Yes. Day and night. That means constantly. Constantly the devil's gone before God accusing you of your thoughts. Amen. It's what it just said, is it not? He wants to destroy you is what he wants to do. He wants to destroy your family, your babies, your church. He wants to shut her down. Yeah. Amen. He wants to destroy us tonight. But did I tell you right here, verse, going back to verse 5, it said, But one of them was fallen of him, and the axe head fell into the water. <laughs> and he cried and said, Alas, Master, <laughs> it was bar. Before I get that bar business, I want to tell you, he went to the Master. I want you to picture this now. They're out there cutting them wood. And all you hear is them axe hitting them veins, and them veins just pile. Yeah. I kept right there on the ground. That's all you hear. And all of a sudden, it just gets dead silence. Huh. That old boy lost his axe head. Huh. He's sitting there with that head on his hand. Just beating that thing against that wall. He ain't done no good Amen. without that axe head. I want you to look at what the next verse says in Revelation. This is what your axe head represents right here. Going back to them verses I just read, we're going to read the next verse. Revelation 12, verse 11. And they overcame him. By the blood of the Lamb. Amen. And by the word of their testimony. Amen. You know what that axe head represents? That, that represents your testimony. Amen. Maybe there's somebody in here tonight. You've lost your testimony. Bless you. I knew it'd get quiet in here. Amen. We don't like to hear this stuff. Amen, but God doesn't lay this on my heart. Amen, because to now in daytime, there's a lot of Christians that sit in church. Cold and dead, ain't got no testimony. They've lost their testimony, but they're going through the motions. Yeah. 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 That's true. I'm going to have to get a sweep of this. I can't even talk. I'm sorry. I don't like none of this. I'm going to have to go. That's why we bring it Thank you for this. If I can get it open. Sorry. That's why I brought it up here. But there's a lot of Christians come in church, cold and dead, yeah. faking. Yeah. Amen. Faking church, Amen. going through the motions, Sunday and Sunday, Wednesday and Wednesday, but inside God's saying, you ain't nowhere alive with me, boy. Amen. But we come in here and fake it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mean to be discouraging. I'm trying to help somebody. Go ahead. More than likely in a crowd this size, and I know it ain't big, but you get five people together, more than likely one of them ain't living right. Amen. Well, Amen. actually, that's, Amen. it's a shame Amen. to say, but it's the truth. Amen. Amen. Yep. So maybe tonight somebody's here. Your axe head doesn't slip off, honey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bless him, Lord. Come on, brother. What that is, your zeal for God. You done lost it. Yeah. You used to be on fire for God, but now you're sitting there cold because you ain't been doing the things of God. Amen. You're going through the motions. Amen. Bless Come him, on. Lord. You may, hey, you can lie to this preacher. You can lie to all these preachers. You can lie to me, but you can't lie to God. Amen. Amen. He already knows. Amen. You already, you might as well look it out there, honey. Yeah. He already knows. You know. Amen. I'll get to that in a minute. But number one, I want you to notice, I'm trying to hurry, brother. I'm trying to be respectful. I'm trying to mind God. Oh, hey, Obey God. He done lost his testimony. Oh, Obey God. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It's, it's easy to lose a testimony, but it's hard to get back. Amen. 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 That's true. Amen. Amen. Hey, hey, as a Christian, people watch us, brother. Yeah. This man right here bless my heart. Oh, mm. yeah. Uh, he's a blessing to me. I yeah. thank God for Amen. man. Amen. Amen. That's, that's God. Amen. Amen. That's what I want on my <laughs> That's why in your hand now, ain't it? <laughs> but I'm telling you, that's what they need to see in us as Christians. Hey, Amen. Yes. That's right. The power of God. That's right. yeah. Hey, I can testify God's been good to me. I ain't nothing without him. I need his presence on my life. I can't preach. I can't do nothing without him. I can't even walk without his own thing. What those some says, ain't it? Amen. That's the truth. Preacher Maybe brother. your axe head then fell off somewhere. Amen. You can get it back tonight. Amen. God's here. He's wanting to help somebody. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The problem is we don't want to help. Amen. My Bible tells me he wants to help us more than we want to help. Amen. Amen. He's here to help somebody tonight. Yes. I believe all my heart he gave me this for a reason. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't make this stuff up. Amen. I don't come up here and put on no show. I'm Amen. just trying to make up my heart to be that my chance. Amen. <laughs> Somebody needs to hear this tonight. 
tonight. Hey, I get discouraged too. This guy, I'm a preacher, don't mean I'm on, I'm on cloud nine all the time. No. That's right. Bro. No. That's right. When I surrendered, I told you the other night, I've had more trials since I surrendered my all to God than I had before when I was living out in the world. Yeah, right? that's right. Because the devil comes against you. Mm -hmm. Trying to shut her down. But maybe you done lost your exhale like this old boy. Mm -hmm. Maybe you lost your testimony tonight. You got to get back to my... It says right here, but one is the one fell in the beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, Master, for it was barred. I wrote down here, maybe you lost your fire for God. Maybe you lost your zeal for God. Then secondly, I want you to know the same verse, verse 5, it says, for it was borrowed. Uh -huh. <laughs> I tell you, you've been bought with a price. Uh -huh. Amen. We don't belong to ourselves anymore, honey. Uh -huh. When God brought, bought you, he paid the price. We're not our own no more. Right. We ought to take care of it so Amen. Mm -hmm. This is where the Holy Ghost dwells. Amen. Because I accepted it. Amen. But somebody said, why didn't they just go buy another axe? Well, we cannot bring the zeal of God back for ourselves. No, we can't. God's got to do that. Amen. Amen. It takes God to bring. See, I can lose the fire of God. I can mess it up. And I've done that before. I've been back slid on God before. Most of us probably have. Amen. Yeah. But see, it took God to give me that zeal back. Amen. I can do anything you want to do. God here go through 12 steps of Joseph Myers or whatever you want to say. But until I meet with God, I ain't going to get the zeal of God back. Because right. it comes from God. Amen. See, they said, why didn't you just go buy another? Well, you can't go out and buy the Holy Ghost. No. No, no sir. <laughs> it comes from God. Yeah, yeah right. You may try to get up here and work it up and do all these things, but until the presence of God falls, you ain't going to do no good. No. Amen. It comes from God. We can't reproduce the zeal of God. We can't reproduce the Holy Spirit. It comes from God alone. It says it was borrowed. <laughs> Come from God. Uh-huh. Then I want you to notice, I'm trying to hurry so you other man can get up here. I want you to notice in verse 6, and the man of God said, we're fed. That's what I want to get to. I told you you can lie to everybody but God. Amen. It's true. He said, where'd you lose it at? I wrote down here, if you'll be honest tonight, if you done lost your zeal for God and your testimony, you know exactly where you lost it at. Yep. Right. You know exactly what happened because that distance between you and God. Amen. You'll be honest. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but the problem is, we don't want to admit it. We'd rather just keep on going through the motions and make it look good to everybody else. But down inside, God's saying, you need to fix that right there. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But we say, what are they going to think of us? We've been going here preaching and everything else. What are they going to say? Who cares? Is it worth losing that fellowship with God over? Amen. Is it worth losing your testimony over? Amen. No. Bless it ain't. Amen. It ain't. No. I'm almost done, I promise you. Bless him, Lord. It says, where you where fell it? He didn't lie to the man of God. Look what he done right there in verse 6. And he showed him the place. Amen. See, that thing fell off and fell in the water. Bless him, Lord. He took that man of God, he said. That man of God said, where's it at? And he said, right there it is. Mm -hmm. He knew exactly where it was. Amen. See, in order for us to get our testimony back yeah. and, and get the zeal of God back or the fire of God, whatever, how you want to say it, in order for him to be in our life, we're going to have to go back to the place where we dropped it. Amen. Go ahead. We dropped it. Amen. God did Right. See, if I'd actually fell in the water over here, this old brother didn't go over here and pick it back up. Amen. He had to go where he dropped it at. Amen. <laughs> Bless him, Lord. Maybe somebody done hurt your feelings in church and you said, well, bless God, I quit on God. They hurt my feelings. Uh -huh. We do that. Yeah. We all seen that before. Yeah. But if, until you go back and deal with the problem, that's where your problem, that, that's when it come more about your feelings than it did about God. Uh -huh. Amen. When you quit on God because you got your little feelings hurt, that's when it come more about you than it did God. <laughs> Guess what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to go back where your feelings was hurt and fix some things. Amen. Yeah. Wherever you lost the zeal of God, you're going to have to go back to get it back. Come on, yeah. brother. Uh, you'll have to go back to the place where you lost it. Right, Amen. Amen. Once you look what happened, I'm almost done. I keep saying that, I promise you. Uh, oh, <laughs> my God. You're good. Where fell? He showed him the place and he cut down a stick. He cast it in the water. Now, we dummies, Chris, uh, not Christian, country folk. Mm -hmm. Bless you, boy. Now, we ain't no scientists, <laughs> but I think we all know metal don't float. Uh -huh. Axe head's pretty heavy. Uh -huh. 
Put it in water, it ain't gonna float. Yeah. <laughs> Go to the bottom. It was down there in that muck and mire. <laughs> See, with you, that's where we at when we lose the seal of God. Amen. Amen. We're buried in the muck and the mire. Yeah. But until he went back to the place, that thing didn't start floating again until he went and fixed it up, Wes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> You're going to have to go back to that old mucky place where you lost it at, and then God's going to make that thing float again. Go ahead. See, it took God to make it float. All he done was throw out all he had. Yeah. See, God can't give yeah. you your zeal back until you give him everything you got. Right. Huh. Yeah, right. Until you give it to God, he can't help you. Bless yeah. You'll just stay cold and dead. Yeah. Uh -huh. Until you're willing to say, well, I don't care what they think of me, and I don't care with this and that and that, I've got to get the fellowship of God back. Because that's more important. Amen. Amen. Until you do that, you're going to sit there cold. Amen. Because God ain't going to say, oh, I feel sorry for you. They just feel bad. Nope. No. You're going to have to put in a little work like these old boys were. Yeah. They just have to work for God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Trying to look. We're going to have to go back to the place. If you lost your testimony, I'm done. If you lost your testimony tonight, if you lost your fire for God and your zeal for God, you're going to have to go back to the place. Amen. Hey, I can't get his zeal back. You can't get my zeal back. we got to do it for a sale. Amen. Amen. Yes. we got to go to God and go to the place where Amen. we lost today. Amen. Say, God, I need it back. Yeah. Can't make it without it. Amen. Go ahead. Then Amen. God's going to say, okay, son, go again. Amen. 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 That's what he wants. That's he right, wants bro. us to go for it. That's right. Right. See, we're his vessels. Amen. The Holy Spirit sent us. We are his Holy Spirit left here on earth. That's what that Holy Ghost is for. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We're his vessels. Amen. We are the body of Christ. This is the church. This is the building. We're the church. Amen. 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 This body ought to be moving, ought to be working, ought to be witnessing. Amen. Amen. But we can't do it without the zeal of God on us. Amen. 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 I can go out here and quote the best. I told you the other night. Have the best outline you want. But if God ain't nowhere in it, ain't going to hit nothing. Amen. 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 I'm done. That's right. Hope that helps somebody. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Bless him, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You know, that's, my, that's one of my favorite passages in the Bible. Sir. You know what just absolutely just blesses my heart? To hear the words come out of somebody else's mouth about something that's so. Amen. Boy, well, it's good, ain't it? Amen. Yes, Amen. Sir. God's good. And you know, all the time. I wish that I could be Happy the one God wanted me to be. Happy juice. I wish I could be the one that, Bless you, Lord. that could really touch somebody's heart. That nobody else could touch. Yeah. But you ask yourself, you say, uh, Lord, how do I do that? Like he said, you've got to get him back from God. Mm -hmm. yeah. You've got to get back in line with God. Mm -hmm. You've got to get back That's in right. touch with God. Amen. And Come you know on, something? Bless you. We really get to studying on everything that we got, and we get to studying on exactly how in the world that we go about trying to talk to God. And you know, everything that we have is a gift from God. Amen. Now listen to Amen, it. It is. I just got a verse or two right here. It's the first Thessalonians in the last chapter. It says, Now we exhort you, brethren, to warn them that are unruly and comfort and feeble minded, support the weak, and be be patient towards all men. Now you get to talking about people that's feeble minded. You get to talking about people that are weak. Now listen to me. Whenever you go trying to witness to these people, you've got to understand they don't know what's doing wrong. They don't know what they're doing. I mean, whenever you go to trying to talk to somebody, you got to go to them because you've been reading your Bible and studying up on this. That don't mean that you can go into somebody and know that they're talking what you're talking about. You've got to be able to search God out and be able to find exactly what it is that you need to explain to them. Because, you know, <clears throat> there's going to be a day when their day of judgment comes you. and you're standing there in line you know however you want to picture however God put it in your mind what are you going to do whenever they turn around and look at you and say Stephen why didn't you explain this to me mm -hmm. yeah. you know I went to church yeah. I heard yeah. another preacher say this before I can sit on church benches whole life and split the hell wide open yeah. 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 and you yeah. know what <clears throat> I heard a man tell me the other day, he said, there's a preacher. He got saved. 
Uh-huh. And I backed up and I said, what do you mean yeah, the preacher got yeah. saved? He said he preached his whole life and never know he's lost. Amen. He said God went to witness until yeah. he realized he is lost. Yeah. Amen. Now, church, that's a scary thing. Uh-huh. That's a scary thing to know that, that you went your whole life yeah. and you, you yeah. thought that you had it all yeah. figured out yeah. and you thought that everything that you'd been taught and yeah. everything you'd read and made know the Bible and everything else was life. Then he come down to it there. He realized he was lost. Amen. Church, yeah. that there, that's a scary feeling to me tonight. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't know for a fact that you are saved tonight, now listen to me. Come on, brother. Bless him, Lord. Bless For the love of God, I want you to really soul search yourself. Bless yourself. my brother, Lord. Because, you know, you may not never get another chance hey, in this world. Right. You know, I, I had yeah. a friend of mine one time. We worked over a half cup together. You know, when I got saved, I went to reading my Bible there and stuff, you know. And I, I went to taking it out there at my, when I was on break there. And I'd sit there and I'd read my Bible and stuff. And that man sat beside me. You know, he never did condemn me because he thought it was going to be one of these things that just start to happen. Then all of a sudden, it would just go away. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I caught myself out there. You know, I was out there, and I, I hey, Lord, give me a message, Jack. And, you know, I went to preaching, and he told me, he said, you turn around, and you tell Rick that's the last message he'll ever get. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God, I turned around, and I told him that. You want to happen next week? Bless him. Now, that's right here. It's God's honest truth. God struck me dead right in front of that time line. Oh, brother. I helped that man right there where he stood right there at the planter where he's taking his last breath. Mm-hmm. Church, let me tell you something. When God tells you to witness mm-hmm. somebody, you better witness to yes, him. Sir. There's, another yes, sir. Man, there's another man. I was a month for Andy. He was up there. He's camping up on City Cove one night. I ain't ever told you this story, but, you know, and, and I went up there, you know, and, and I went up there. My uncle Randy, he kind of got out of church a little bit, you know, and I wanted to go up there and witness to him. That's been years ago. And I ran the other day. He's a fine fella. He goes to church every Sunday now, thank God. I went up there to witness to him, and I was sitting up there, and I sat down. You know, they was all sitting around picking music. You know, there wasn't nothing really bad going on. And I went to witness to him. Here come this drunk man down the campsite, down here to our campsite. Lord said, hey, Stephen, witness to him. Yeah. What I do? I sit there with my head down. Uh-huh. I never spoke a word to him. Well, and you know what? Done that. that night, I was laying there in the bed. My house that I lived in built in 1973, they'd never been snake in. Never. I was laying there in bed that night and there's a snake crawled across my mm. forehead that night like right up there. Mm. Never been mm. snake before in my house. I jumped up and I grabbed that old big gun. You know, I looked when I flipped the light on there. When I was laying flat on my back, and when I brought, took a step, I jumped out of bed and I was standing at the light switch and I flipped her on. And I promise you that snake, it was, it was one of them old uh, uh, I, I call him a chicken snake. A black and they got the big white chest on him here. He dressed from one, one of my bed posts to the other bed post. This is a full bed now. Mm-hmm. And I grabbed that snake, my, uh, you know, and they, they hollered and chewed it. And I, I fought that snake all the way up the bedroom. Or all the way up through, through the hallway. Plumbed to the dad gum living room. There, and I had that gallon of mason jar there. And I, I, I fought that thing. I got it in the mason jar. And as soon as I got the lid slapped down on, I set her down on the coffee table. And sat down there and caught my breath. The Lord said, see there, you beat him. Uh-huh. And I said, what do you mean I beat him, Lord? He said, that was the devil. I tried to teach you obedience. And he said, you let the devil whoop you up there on city code. He said, but yeah. you, you fought him right yeah. here in the house. Yeah. And now you've got him in a jar where yeah. he can't get you. Yeah. He said, son, yeah. that's the only time I'm going to teach you obedience. He said, you better learn obedience right now. Yeah. So listen to me now. When God tells you to obey him and yeah. do what he does, yeah. don't do like Stephen did. Sit there with your mouth shut. Because let me tell you something. It ain't nothing for God to let us make crawl across. Amen. 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 I promise you that right now. Amen. And you know what? Church, it's just... It's, like I told you this morning, you know, you can say it and you can try to be everything that you try to be in this church house. You can go out here and you can you can witness to people and you, you can subscribe with them. I mean, a lot of times, you know, they ain't got a friend in the world. You know what a good way to see is sometimes it's just being a friend to somebody. Amen. You can go up here to somebody's house that they won't want to fool with, yeah. you know, and they're out here and they're working on their lawnmower, cussing it, kicking it, doing whatever, and you get down there and get dirty and greasy with them. You know yeah. what? That's a witness. Yeah, yeah. You tell That's them to say, well, won't you come out here to the church house with me one time? You know, as a preacher, I had, had a man tell me one time, as a, as a preacher, he was preaching revival. It's he's, he's been a long time ago. And as a man out there, had his old mule, had it out there and had that old plow out there behind him. And he said, he was a plow in his garden there. And here comes this little preacher down the road. He was going to church that Sunday morning. The Lord told him to stop. 
He said, stop and go out there and invite him to church. And he, he said, Lord, I just bought my new shoes and I got this new, <laughs> new, new suit that my wife bought me last week, you know. He said, stop. And he stopped and he went out through there and he stomped out through there in that old mud and stuff, you know, and got his shoes dirty, grunty. Preach, he's got dirt blown up to here. And you know what? He went up there and he told that man, he said, we're going to have church down here in about 10 o'clock when it's going to start. He said, I'd love to have you. That's all the preacher said to him. He said, you know, if you need anything, let me know. And he went and got in his car and went on. You know what happened at 10 o'clock that morning? That little old farmer come through the door. Yeah. Had his overhauls on. Nasty. He come right straight to the door. And he went to the altar. Yeah. He got Amen. saved. Amen. Amen. Church, they ain't a testimony like that. You can't make that up. Right, right. there, right. it's right. from God. Right. Whenever yeah. God right. tells you to trouble yeah. something like that, he tells you to do something. There's a reason behind it. Yeah. Yeah. You know that? Yeah. Because, <laughs> church, let me tell you something. I don't want him to answer me this question. How much time have you got left? Hey. I mean, no, you got a year, month, day, week, hour? Mine's shorter than most. How do you know that? I might get in my truck and go down the road there and go pull out and car kill me. Yeah. According to age, I'm mine's smaller. The point is, I'm getting that, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How long have you got to witness to somebody? Yeah. How many opportunities right, have you bro. got to witness somebody? Yeah. How many times have you got to go over here at your neighbor's house and be a friend? Amen. How much longer have you got to show compassion yeah. on somebody that ain't That's got right. something? That's right. You yeah. know, church, you know, I, I, you know I, I've had a lot of stuff stole from me over the years. You know, the lifestyle I used to live, you know, with your friends that you, I call them friends, they'd come into your house, you know, and sit down there with you, and they'd party with you all night, and if you ever passed out, you wouldn't have a thing left when you woke up that morning. Nobody knows where nothing went. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Church, you know what? I can lay down at my house tonight. My friends can come over. I can lay down right there in my recliner. Amen. I can go to sleep. Amen. I can sleep. That's Some right. of this Amen, sadly, when I get God. up, if there's a million dollars laying on my coffee table, you know what? There'd be a million laying there when I got up. Amen. Amen. Church, that's how God will change your life. Amen. I mean, it's a good thing to have God in your life. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you something. If you look, if you look right on back there in the beginning of that chapter, there it tells you uh, in the second verse, "Be, be yourself known perfectly for that day of the Lord so cometh that as a thief in the night." Amen. Amen. Now listen to me, church. You know, I, I've had people come up in the middle of the night and they, they stole no welder from me. I had, you know, they went up our garage there and they got that welder. Well, you know what? Here, look recently, you know, I bought that place up there and I was hunting me a welder. Well, glory to God, you know what welder I got back whenever I got that welder back? It was that old wore out welder I had up there in that other garage up there. They said, how do you know it's yours? And I said, watch this. And I raced down and flipped around. A few minutes, it went to making this got off the rack and I ran back and kicked the side out of it. You know what? She sat there and said, she just hung just so pretty and I can weld with her. She goes making that racket again. I ran back and kick it again. Y'all to restore to you for finding these people's took <laughs> away from them. You know, that welder ain't not be worth much to young, but you know what? I learned on that welder. That's the one my grandpa would give me when I was growing up. You don't learn on it. Little things like that right there made more than anything. I mean, church, you got to realize what you got done for you. I mean, you think, well, Stephen, what about this? I mean, that's just a little small thing. What about, you know, is there any big thing he's done for you? Amen. I mean, one thing God ain't done to me that wasn't big in my life. Amen. Amen. Come on, brother. I mean, think right. about it. There right. I was. I mean, if you know me in the past, there I was. If I wanted to do it, run up and down the road and party and drink and, you know, chase girls and all this other nonsense foolishness. And, you know, yeah. it, it was just, you know, you didn't have no, really no true friends. You didn't have nothing that you could call your own. And, you know, what happened? God stepped in. Amen. Amen. You know what? There's changes made up there in that holler. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to brag on myself because I didn't have nothing in it. What does the Bible say? God chose you. Amen. He didn't choose me. Amen. That's what he tells us. Amen. And you know what? I'm thankful that God chose me. Amen. I'm thankful that God put somebody in front of me to be able to witness to. I may not be the best witness in the world, but you know what? I'm sure if it, you know if I, if I can get myself right, I can help somebody. Amen. Amen. I believe if I, if I get myself in the position where I need to be, that you know what? Everything that comes out of my mouth will be from God. Amen. Amen. You say, well, Stephen, well, well, how in the world do you know that? Come on, brother. Nine times out of ten, when it's something you, God wants you to do, you don't want to do it. Uh -uh. That's the truth of it. Amen. I mean, nine times out of ten, whenever God tells you to do something, you're like, Lord, I don't. It's like any preacher that had that brand new suit on. 
had them brand new shoes on. That old farmer out there plowing, that old wore out yeah. mule. Yeah. He didn't want to get out of the car. <laughs> he said, Lord, I just got all this. Yeah. You know what he forgot to remember though? The Lord wanted to give that to him. Amen. 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 Church, what all does God give you tonight? Yeah. Amen. Hey, I'm one of the richest men on earth. Amen. Amen. My children love the Lord. They love the saints of God. Amen. Yeah. They, love this. they love to, you know, they yeah. love to pray with you. You know. Praise God. Bless him, Lord. Buy that for me. Amen. Amen. Where's the price tag on it? Amen. Church, there ain't a price tag on that. You can't, you can't, you can't have that. And you know what, church, tonight, I hope that you, that you look down at yourself tonight before you lay down and you go to bed. And you can get down there and you can talk to your father. You know, I tell my father good night every night. <laughs> because I believe one day he'll wake me up and say, Come on, son. Amen. It's time for you to get up. Daddy's home. Mm -hmm. Church, can you lay down and tell your father good night? Tell him that you love him. Have <laughs> you ever really thought that I might get on get to wake up? Yeah. You want God to open? He said, I'll always take care of your family. As long as you say, sir, yeah. he yeah. said that I'd yeah. never be caught begging for bread. Yeah, amen. He, amen. Said that he said he'd save my family. And you say, well, Stephen, is that why you serve God for self-gain? No, it ain't. I serve God because I owe him for everything. Amen. I owe him yeah. for everything. Amen. I mean, there, you, a lot of people say, well, what do you owe him for, Stephen? You owe him, you know, I know Jesus died for you. I know Jesus, he went to the cross for you. He took that beating for you. Is that all you owe him for? No, that ain't all I owe him for. That right there was... Right there was the. Mm, that's good, Doc. Amen. Yeah. I don't know how to explain that because that was the best thing that he's done for me. Amen. But you know what? The shoes that I get up and put on to go to work. Yeah. I owe him for. I owe him for that. Amen. That paycheck I get on Friday. Yeah. I owe him for that. Amen. The times that we've been out of money and it's appeared, I owe him for that. Amen. Well. Church, you need to realize yeah. the small things that God does for you. Yeah. When, I mash, when I mash my finger with a hammer, I need to thank Him because I got a finger to mash. Yeah. Yeah. Church, I know people today that's missing fingers. My yeah. grandpa's missing through. One iron, one iron, one on this hand. Yeah. Church, He said He'd give a million dollars a piece to have them back. You better be thankful for what you got. Now, church, that's all the Lord's given me Bless tonight. Him. Him, I love you as a death. <laughs> I promise you, I'll help you do what I can. Amen. I'm going to get out of your way. Amen. Bless him. Amen. 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 Bless him, Lord. Help him, Jesus. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Bless him, Lord. Something that really stuck with me. Amen. When you was reading about the devil yeah. fighting with the archangel, he prevailed not. Yes, the devil yes, cannot sir. prevail yes, against us exactly unless right. we let him. And the way we let him on, is we let him. You ever looked at a piece of wood that's been laid out for a while? <laughs> yep. Fire wood. Yep. Yeah. Get what we call a weather crack in it. Amen. When that wood starts cracking like that, you can set a wedge in that crack and hit it with a hammer a few times and split it open. Amen. That's the way the devil does Amen. his life. He crawls wow. in through that little crack that we leave. Yeah. Amen. He puts that wedge in there, yeah. boom, 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 and boom. And right. Amen. And we're out right. in the world like this young man right. was talking right. about. I can right. testify to you. Don't let what people in church does that you don't like affect right. your Christian Amen. life. Yep. Man, I've right. been there. I've done that. I got bad in church and I walked out. Yeah, bless him, Lord. Bless him. Yep. Don't let the devil do that to you. Right. Yeah. I lost my testimony. Yeah. As you spoke okay. about. Okay. It was years before I could go back to church. I ain't going down to that bunch of hypocrites. Yeah. We'll go over here with a bunch of hypocrites too. Come on, bro. Yeah. <laughs> well, the devil will put <laughs> things in your mind. I wound up doing the same things that I did before God got a hold of me. Yeah, that's right. right. 